and welcome to Know About Chef. Today on the menu, we're actually not doing something on the menu. <laughs> <laughs> we're doing a skills video. Yeah. Cutting skills video. Cutting skills video. So in this video, I'll be showing you some basic cutting skills. We'll be cutting an onion, a carrot, and a lettuce to show you some basic skills like some slicing, dicing, batons, and julienne. Some of the bit more complex cuts that you probably won't be using. Probably won't use that much. <laughs> but cutting an onion is always useful to know. Yep. And we're going to show you how we've learned to do it while working in commercial kitchens. Yeah. So let's get cutting. Yeah, let's get cutting. <laughs> cutting on the cut. <laughs> <laughs> Firstly, one of the first things I should teach you is how to hold the knife. So you've got your different sections of the knife. You've got the point. You've got the heel you've got the blade and then you have the spine of the knife if you need to handle the knife in any way always be using the spine because obviously that's not going to cut you now with the handle you want to ride up you don't want to be holding the knife like this because if you press down too hard the knife can slip and turn in your hand it's nice to ride up and then you put your three fingers around there and then you just take your first index finger and then just slide it in just down here so it's rides it it holds up against the I would say the top of the handle and on the other side your thumb just presses up against the edge of the blade like that not on the edge sorry on the side of the blade like that <laughs> don't put your thumb on the edge of the blade <laughs> not advised not advised this way you've got control of the blade it's not going to slip left or right, no matter how much you want to twist it. You've got a good grip on it. You don't have to be handling it like Hercules to stop it from twisting or turning. And you've got so much more control, you're less likely to slip, the blade will turn less, and you're not going to cut yourself as often. Top tip. Top don't tip. Don't cut yourself. Don't cut yourself. <laughs> a top tip is the sharper the knife, the less likely you are to cut yourself with. Yes. I know that doesn't sound quite right, but when you think about it, having a blunt knife is more likely to slip, skid, slide off, and get out of control. Where a nice sharp knife, as long as you're taking necessary precautions, you'll be able to slice straight in without it bumping or jumping off. And just as a side note, if you can see a whole lot of stuff in our lounge room while we're filming this... Yeah, we're painting the boat at the same time. We are in the process of painting the boat, so it yeah. looks like a mess. <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately, there's not a lot of space on an arrow boat. No, unfortunately not. <laughs> Let's get cutting. Yeah. So I've got my cutting board ready, and I'm going to slip a non-slip mat underneath so it's not slipping around while I'm cutting. And we'll start off by peeling an onion. I'll show you the technique that we were taught in college that minimizes waste. And it's quite easy to do. Sounds basic, peeling an onion, but... Yeah. but yeah. <laughs> Might as well start somewhere. <laughs> so I'm going to start by just removing the loose bits and pieces off the outside of the onion. And then I'm just going to use a knife to quickly, basically top and tail. Making sure to get enough off, but without being too wasteful. And I just grab the edge of my knife without cutting through, just going through the top layer of skin and just make a very, very shallow incision across the edge. And I'm just using my nail and get under and just grab that top brown layer and then just peel it back. Sometimes the under, the first layer of onion will have, it'll be all like, how do I say, like, dried out and tacky and stuff so don't be worried if you just have to remove that layer as well so these bits of onion are often used for stock stock yep there's still plenty of flavor in the tops and tails and that extra layer that we take off and then for slicing and dicing we'll start off with a dice and then move on to slice i'm just going to halve the onion straight down the center. All right, we're gonna start by cutting horizontally through the knife from this side. We're making sure not to cut all the way through and the side that we're not gonna cut through is the side that's got the root end on it. The root end will help hold the rest of the onion together. So we just come in and we're just going in quite gently and slowly, just to make sure we're not slipping all the way through. 
and we're going to make about three of these cuts. get the size that we want. Obviously if you want smaller you would make more incisions and if you want bigger you'd make less. Now we're going to go down from the top making sure not to go all the way through to the end like our horizontal ones. We're leaving this area as a binder. So we're just going to slice down leaving enough room in between to get our nice dice. And now we're on to the, the chopping, basically. And whenever I'm cutting, with most vegetables and that, I'll make my hand into a claw or a paw shape. That way when you're slicing down, the blade of the edge will just graze your knuckles, but it's not about to go through any fingers that you lose track of. And always make sure your thumb is tucked up. Everyone seems to forget the thumb, even me. <laughs> and we slice down. Every time we make a slice, we want to move the knife slightly forward as well as we're going down. We want a nice slicing motion, not straight down. We want to move forward and down. So we're using the nice edge and letting the knife do most of the work. So next I'll be slicing an onion. Are you starting to cry? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so there's two directions you can slice a onion from. You can slice an onion lengthways across the most broadest side which is good for like cooked onions for like a barbecue or something like that because you've got these nice long pieces that you're going to cook down anyway. But if you're doing it from a salad it's a little bit more of a complex technique but not much. You can slice from the side with the grain basically and you start off at an angle that way you're not getting a big flat piece at the end and you're just slicing in Trying to get as thinly as you can. That way you get these nice thin slices. And this is really good for salads and a lot of Asian dishes. That way the onion's not too long. And it cooks just as well as the other way. And there we go. So I'm just going to cut it the other way that I mentioned earlier, just straight down. And these will just be straight down cuts. I do have to keep reminding myself to cut slower because if I cut too fast, no one will be able to see anything. <laughs> there we go. And as you can see, as compared to the earlier slice, that's the one where we're cutting across and that's the, a piece where we're cutting with the width of it. It's a little bit thinner, a little bit more nice looking. This is like a bit big and chunky. Enough practice and enough skill, you should be able to cut faster and faster as you get more and more experience. And then you'll be cutting like a chef. Uh, so next I'll be moving on to a carrot. I'm just going to do a quick peel of it and I'll quickly show you how to do baton. And then I will show you how to do some juliennes. Batons are quite simple. That's the word is describing, and julienne is just very tiny versions of batons. Once you've peeled your carrots, we're going to start by just top and tailing it, because we don't need those pieces off at all. Now I'm just going to cut it to the appropriate length that I'll be cutting my batons into. And with any round vegetable, root vegetable, that we want to start off with a stable base. So we're just going to cut off a little flat face for ourselves and then place it down. That way it's a bit more stable and it's easier for us to cut. And for a baton, I'm just going to square this off, rolling it onto the flat safe, uh, surfaces I just cut. What we should we end with is a nice, what would you say that is? A box cube, shape. Cube rectangle? Yeah. <laughs> and all I'm going to do is just cut it straight down the middle, because luckily my carrot is always the perfect size for two. And then just cut these again in half to give us our nice batons. If you want to dice carrots, you can go from this stage, from the baton stage, and then just cut them into little cubes. Just like that. Now we're going to move on to julienne, which is 
by far one of the more difficult ways of cutting vegetables. But I will show you a cheat way of doing it, <laughs> which is also doesn't waste as much of the carrot either. So I start off with the bit and I start off like the batons, cutting off a length for the size that I want my julienne. And then I will make a little flat surface, but not for cutting, for peeling. This is my secret to julienne carrots. If you use your peeler and you get, try to get as thick peels as you can, just peeling the flat surface. Once you've got a few of these peelings, you can stack them up on top of one another, just like so. Cut away the uneven edge, and then you just very thinly slice it using our claw hand and our knife movements. There we go. And there we have some nice, easy, easily made julienne. So next I'm going to do chiffonade, which is usually used for leafy vegetables, lettuces, cabbages, that kind of thing. And it's pretty much the same technique for nearly all the leafy vegetables when you want to chiffonade it. And chiffonade is just basically like a very fine slice, but because they're usually a big leafy lettuce and you don't want to use the whole thing, you just use this technique I'm about to show. So you start with your nice washed lettuce, and you just peel off as much leaves as you need. Then you want to take those leaves, usually with the biggest first, spread them out a little bit, and then just put the leaves inside one another. I'm just going to break off the ends of it too because they're quite tasteless. You've got your leaves kind of stacked in one another. You're just going to roll them over into like a cigar shape. Not being too rough, you don't want to crush them. And once you've got your nice cigar shape, you just take your knife, starting at one end, and then just do like a rocking motion to get the nice thin slice. Slow down a bit. Slow down. Slow right. down. <laughs> and you just use your rocking motion to make thin little slices. And of course you can adjust that, or even use a slightly different technique to get big slices. But usually with chiffonade you want a nice thin slice. It's basically like shredding it. And I always slow down towards the end. Always slow down your knife when you get towards the end. That's usually when you start cutting yourself. So then you've got this nice leafy vegetable all nice thinly sliced. It's good for certain salads. It's good for stir fries with cabbage. Anything you could imagine. So lastly, I'll be copying, cutting, copying, I'll be copying. <laughs> mm. You're so funny. <laughs> um, so lastly, I'll be cutting up a red pepper. Uh, some people have a bit of trouble with the red pepper because the skin's quite tough. With a sharp knife or even a serrated knife, if you're that desperate, <laughs> it's not that difficult. And I'll also show you how to get all the flesh without having to cut the top out and de-seed it and everything like that. A little bit of a time saver and also you don't really waste anything. So I'm using the whole pepper so I'm going to start off by cutting the bottom off which can be sliced up as well and it's a nice flat surface and then I'm just going to use my sharp knife to cut the cheeks off. So I'll get four cheeks. All the seeds in that will still be stuck in the lid and if I'm not too fussed about using this, I will just throw that whole thing away and it's not really that much wasted. It's just these little bits here. But if you do want it to keep it, you can just slice the seeds off, get rid of the seeds and stuff, straight through like that, like I've sliced through, and then you just remove the top and you can use all of that. And then we've wasted none of the flesh when we remove it all like that. It's all available to be cut. So then I'm going to start by slicing it, and then I'll show you a quick dice. So I'm starting, I'm, I've got the skin, the tough side out, because my knife is nice and sharp, and I'm just going to slice down through, because once you get through that 
um, that tougher outer bit, it's quite easy to slice after that. You can slice it the other way, but I find it's a little bit more unstable. And you keep having to push it down. Which I find kind of annoying. <laughs> if you're using it for a particular thing, or you don't like any of the pith or anything in it, you can lay it down with the skin on the outside. Place your blade down flat against it. Just give it a little bit of pressure. That way you're pushing down the edge and the pith and the inside of the flesh is popping up ever so slightly. And just slowly with like a slight sawing motion, just run your blade along it and then towards the end slow down until you've removed the pith. You've got a nice flat piece of pepper to work with. And then dice. A lot of the time when you come with a piece that's similar to this, when you're dicing anything, always start your dice by slicing along the longest length first. It makes handling it so much easier later. Then you hold it just down, all your pieces together, all lined up. And again, just straight through, dicing and pushing away from you to make yourself some room. There we are. So, Ryan. What? <laughs> What are you going to do with all your cut up onions and vegetables? Well, because most of it's onion <laughs> and there's really too much onion to really make any normal m meal out of. <laughs> I'm just going to make a French onion soup for lunch, a very quick French onion soup. Nice. The rest of it I'll put in the fridge and I'll make a salad with dinner later on tonight. Sounds good. Yeah. I look forward to lunch and dinner. <laughs> <laughs> so we're just going to do a bit of French onion soup, we're filming a little bit of that. We're not going to put a recipe up. But, but if it, the French onion soup will be in our long awaited, <laughs> often delayed recipe book. It is coming. <laughs> Thank you for watching our first skill video. Well, second skill video we did nice sharpening, didn't we? Oh, we did, yeah, yeah, yeah okay. So our second skill video, we're thinking of calling it Masterclass, making a separate series out of it. The Just Masterclass let, yeah, series the masterclass. by Narrowboat Chef. <laughs> <laughs> Just let us know if you enjoyed it or if there's any other skills you'd like us to teach you. That'd be quite interesting, some of the ideas people come up with. Yeah, maybe some eggs. Maybe like egg. boiling an egg, poaching an egg, yeah, that could be a good one. Yeah, egg video. Yeah, <laughs> we're going to go and enjoy our French onion soup. Yeah, I was yes. like, is it really French onion soup? We kind of like cobbled it together. <laughs> our it's French, French onion, onion soup. soup. <laughs> it smells awesome. Mm. Making my mouth water, right? Yeah, it's not quite finished yet, so. But he's such a good chef. <laughs> But before we go, we'd just like to say a quick thank you to some new patrons. We have some new Apprentice Chef level patrons, Liz Williams, Carolyn Staines, and Robert Schwartz. So thank you very much, guys. Really appreciate it. And thanks to all our patrons. All of our patrons. Yes, definitely. Yeah. And all of our viewers in and general. And all our viewers. <laughs> we love you all. <laughs> yeah. And we will see you next time. Oh, also, as always, don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye. We'll see you next time. Bye. All right, if I lift this one out. You're lying in a sun pixel. Not many spots to lie in the boat at the moment, is there? All this stuff everywhere. Because of all the painting. <laughs> uh-uh, you're not allowed in the kitchen. I'm allowed in the kitchen. Hey, hey, where are you going? <laughs>